the best information on the world internet, we encourage you to leave a subscription and like. I invite you to today's report from the front. A series of explosions took place overnight in the Kaluga and Tula areas near Moscow, Ukrainian Pravda reported. According to this source, the operations of two Moscow airports have been suspended. 42 attempted attacks have taken place in Crimea, which was previously annexed, according to Ukrainian journalists, citing the Russian Defense Ministry. Ukrainska Pravda reported on the attacks in the cities of Kaluga and Tula, south of the Russian capital, while quoting both independent and official Russian sources, including telegram channels such as Baza and Astra, and the TASS agency. According to reports on the Baza channel, residents of the Tula and Kaluga areas described on social media the sounds of explosions and the operation of anti-missile systems. According to the citation, several cases of airborne drone neutralization are tentatively identified. In turn, an Astra source relayed accounts from residents of the cities of Obninsk and Maloyaroslavets in the Kaluga region, who reported hearing three or four explosions on social media. Ukrainska Pravda and Reuters, relying on information from the government agency TASS, whose source was the aviation service, reported that Moscow's Domodedovo and Vinukovo airports had temporarily suspended receiving and departing aircraft operations. That same night, the Russian Defense Ministry, whose communique was cited by Ukrainska Pravda, reports that 42 drones attempted to attack Crimea. According to the Russian ministry, anti-aircraft defenses shot down nine drones, and 33 were disabled by electronic warfare means. The ministry in Moscow also reports that none of the drones reached their targets, and the incidents took place in the Sevastopol area. Reuters journalists noted that this is the largest number of drones observed in such incidents to date. A telegram channel called SHOT published a video that allegedly shows a drone flying over Simferopol. Sounds of explosions were heard in Odessa on Friday night, while air defense forces repelled an alleged Russian missile attack on the city, the Ukrainska Pravda portal reported. Information about the rocket attack on the city also appears on the telegram channels of the Ukrainian Air Force and the Defense Forces of Southern Ukraine. An analysis by the Institute for War Studies shows that Ukrainian forces are approaching the second ring of Russian defenses near the town of Robotyne, located in the western part of Zaporizhia region. Based on visual footage published on August 24, it is observed that Ukrainian troops have made shifts in the direction west of Verboa and in the area south of Robotyne. The Wall Street Journal reports that the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, signaled to his American counterparts that his units were close to achieving a breakthrough during the counteroffensive. Although U.S. officials believe in Ukraine's potential success, there is intense discussion behind the scenes about the most effective strategy and tactics for the counteroffensive. U.S. experts are suggesting a concentration of Ukrainian forces to break through Russia's defensive line and direct the assault toward the Sea of Azov. Although some tactical modifications have recently been implemented, the sides have not reached a clear consensus on future actions, especially with the onset of winter. One of the key assumptions of U.S. advisors is the belief that U.S. supplied weapons worth more than $43 billion should be sufficient de la Ukrainian offensive. At the same time, they point out that the likelihood of similar support next year is low. Andriy Kovalev, spokesman for the Ukrainian general staff, reported positive progress by Ukrainian troops on the southern front. As the assault continues toward Melitopol, Ukraine is achieving successes. Also in the Donetsk region, Ukrainians are launching an attack in the area south of Bakhmut, the spokesman noted that particularly successful were the operations in the directions of Novodanilivka Novo Prokopivka and Mali Tokmachka Ocheretuvate, where troops achieved successes and took stable positions on the achieved frontiers. These localities are located southwest of Zaporozhye. In the Bakhmut area, attacks are continuing on the southern area of the city, Kovalev reported. Although definitive proof is still lacking, there is a high probability that Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin was indeed killed in the plane crash on Wednesday, the British Defense Ministry reported Friday. The latest intelligence update noted that a private Embraer jet belonging to the Wagner Group crashed near Tver, 
between Moscow and St. Petersburg on Wednesday, exactly two months after the Wagner Group mutiny. Russian authorities reported that 10 people, including the Wagner Group's owner, died in the crash. While there is still no conclusive proof that Prigozhin was on board, and Prigozhin himself was known to have taken special safety measures, there is a high probability that he is indeed dead. Prigozhin's death would almost certainly have had a profoundly destabilizing effect on the Wagner Group. His personal qualities, such as hyperactivity, extraordinary courage, drive for achievement, and extreme brutality, permeated the Wagner Group's structures. It is unlikely that any potential successor could take his place. News of a vacuum in the Wagner Group's leadership is intensifying as reports suggest that founder and field commander Dmitry Utkin and logistics chief Valery Chekalov have also been killed, the statement said. Ihor Klimenko's interior ministry has announced that the Ukrainian government has decided to dismiss the head of Ukraine's state emergency service, General Sergei Kruk, from his post, Reuters reports. The reasons for the dismissal are not yet known. According to a Reuters report, Dmitry Peskov, a Kremlin spokesman, announced that there is an established agreement for a planned meeting between Vladimir Putin and Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan has invited Putin to visit Turkey this month, but no specific date has yet been set. Peskov also gave no information on a possible venue for the meeting between the two leaders. A group of Russian militants supporting Ukraine has issued a call for members of the Wagner Group, a Russian mercenary outfit, to join their ranks to avenge the deaths of Yevgeny Prigozhin and Dmitry Utkin, Reuters reports. Denis Kapustin, commander of the Russian Volunteer Corps, which is leading the fight against the Kremlin in both Ukraine and Russia, addressed them in a speech released in the video. Kapustin pointed to their difficult choice, to stand before the gates of the Russian Defense Ministry and serve as protection for their commanders and forcers, or to exact revenge. Kapustin stressed that to achieve revenge, they must join the Ukrainian side. On the occasion of Independence Day, Alexander Lukashenko wished Ukraine well. In his letter, the Belarusian leader referred to the past, maintaining a nostalgic tone, and called for an end to confrontation. The letter surprisingly ended with words of reconciliation. For centuries, many generations of Belarusians and Ukrainians coexisted in harmony and with mutual respect. The ancestors of both nations traded, created families, and together fought bravely against fascism and rebuilt their common state in the first post-war years, Lukashenko wrote. Today, we are still characterized by qualities such as industriousness, respect for elders and our own traditions, and a unique culture, he, he added. In the letter, Lukashenko also expressed his desire to end the confrontation with Ukraine. Both countries, which regained their independence more than three decades ago, have chosen independent paths of development, building a future in which we must create secure opportunities for the dignified coexistence of the entire region. We should use the value of the neighborhood to end confrontation. The Belarusian side is ready to take all necessary steps and even more to this end. I believe this is possible, the dictator wrote, wishing the people of Ukraine and all people the necessary peace. Offensive operations by Russian forces continue in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Ukrainian servicemen were involved in 35 clashes with Russian forces. The fighting took place in the Novoyehorivka area in the Luhansk region, south of Avdiivka in the Donetsk region, northeast of Novomichailivka, and in the village of Maryinka in the Donetsk region, reports the morning report of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In the regions of Sveroshchina and Slobozhanshchina, Russian forces conducted shelling of localities such as Krinivka, Turiya, Gleshnia, Yanuzhelevka, Nikolaevka, and Hay, which are located in the Chernihiv region. The shelling also included the towns of Obyednan, Kodain, Uroyedi, Novodmitrivka, and Popivka in the Sumi region, as well as Red Zoraya, Strilecha, Hatisha, Malavovcha, and Topoli in the Kharkiv region. In addition, the Russian Air Force carried out airstrikes on Bobilivka and Volyn, located in the Sumy region, reports this morning's report from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. According to a recent report by the U.S.-based Institute for the Study of War, 
A shortage of armaments, military equipment, and low morale are the main problems facing Russian invasion forces fighting in Ukraine. In some places on the front lines, Russian soldiers even admit that they are dissatisfied with their situation and the difficulty of fighting with their commanders. The Institute reports that reports of shortages in various weapons are coming in from different operational directions, including light armored vehicles, boats, artillery guns, and howitzers, among others. In addition to equipment shortages, a weakness of Russian forces is also the mentality of commanders who impose punishments on their subordinates for minor infractions, including administrative ones. All these factors lead to a lowering of morale in the Russian army, as confirmed by military bloggers in Russia commenting on the invasion and the Kremlin's policies. However, ISW notes that the Russians are favored by time, as the stalemate on the front, partly due to delays in providing Ukraine with military support from the West, allows them to analyze mistakes and effectively adjust tactics, even despite systemic problems in the army. The Institute also confirms that Ukrainian troops scored local successes on Sunday and Monday in the Robotyne and Mali Tokmachka regions of the Zaporizhia region. Russian counterattack attempts in the area failed. The ISW recalls that the eventual breakthrough of the enemy's defensive lines by the Ukrainians may enable them to move on to the offensive in less mined areas. A Ukrainian counteroffensive has been underway since early June in the Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions in the south and east of the country. Despite limited successes, the Ukrainian army must overcome difficulties such as multi-layered lines of enemy fortifications and minefields. So far, it has managed to regain control of about 10 localities, mostly in the west of the Donetsk region.